Hi everyone, welcome back to Joanne Tech Lover. I'm Joanne, and today it's a very special episode. I will be building the first ever editing slash gaming build on this channel. I've done some other system builds before, but it's been like a year and I really miss it, so I'm excited to get started. But first, a big thank you to the sponsors, Corsair, MSI, Intel, boom, boom, boom. <laughs> thank you so much for providing the parts. I mean, I couldn't do it without you guys, so mwah. Thank you. <laughs> and also, why am I doing this build right now? Well, it's because I'm celebrating JTL's first year on YouTube. That's right, I started the very first video on April 7, 2014. So today should be April 7, 2015. But let's go ahead and call out the parts. Let's start off with the case. So this is where all the lovely components will find their happy home. This is the Corsair Obsidian Series 450D computer case. And next to that is the MSI X99S Gaming 7 motherboard, which I did an overview for on JTL. Be sure to check that out. And beneath that, the MSI GTX 970 Gaming 4G graphics card, which I also did an unboxing for. And to the right of that, you have the Corsair H100i GTX 240mm liquid CPU cooler. And beneath that, the Corsair CS850M power supply. And one of the main events is the Intel i7-5930K processor. This one deserves its own class section. <laughs> and moving right along, we also have the Corsair 16GB DDR4 LPX memory. My first time with DDR4, so that's exciting. Corsair also provided the Neutron XT 240GB SSD. I learned from a few years ago that it is very important to have more than 120 gigs of SSD space. <laughs> anyway, so as for the hard drive, I got the Western Digital Green 2TB desktop hard drive. It is a 3.5 inch SATA 6 gigabit per second drive. And last but not least is the optical drive. I got the Lidon 24X SATA internal DVD plus minus RW drive. First step is to install the CPU. So I've got the motherboard on top of the box, but make sure you ground yourself every time before you touch components. So I just use my optical drive, or you can use the side of your case or whatever metal to ground yourself. And then let's go ahead and open this up, shall we? There we go. Yeah, ha ha ha. And then we shall lift this piece. Do not touch any of these pins, please do not. And then you can just pop this out or it'll just pop out by itself later, but I'm just gonna do it right now. And next you take the CPU, muy preciosa or so, I'm not sure. Don't touch the top or the bottom as you have oily fingers no matter what. <laughs> and then you will notice that there is a uh, triangle or arrow on the corner you want to match it up with the arrow here so you know exactly how to install this and all you do is gently drop it in and it should fit in the socket just like so haha <laughs> and then go ahead and put this down and secure it into place Oops, I just moved the board a little bit. Sorry about that. And then this one too. Oh God. When I hear that creaking, I'm like, Jesus, I'm breaking it, but I'm not. <laughs> and there you have it. And now let's install the DIMMs. First, you wanna look at your motherboard guide so you know which DIMM slots to install in. So it seems the outer and inner. So we're gonna go ahead and do that. Once again, these are the Corsair Vengeance. LPX DDR4 sticks. And I've got four of them, so I'm gonna install first on the outer edge. So pull this little tab back. And then there's a slot here that only fits in one way. And it looks like it's this way, which is great because then you'll probably be able to see that it is Corsair memory. So give me one moment. It's just an awkward angle, but slot this in. Make sure you hear a click. There we go, that means your memory has been seeded. Now let's go ahead and do the rest. Now to install the standoffs for the liquid CPU cooler. So I'm gonna go ahead and use the fat end to install into these mounting holes here. And LGA 2011 setup does not need a back plate, so that makes my job a lot easier. So I'm gonna go ahead and do it 
across from the first standoff. Let's go ahead and install the two 120mm fans onto the 240 radiator before we go ahead and put this entire setup into the case. So first up, I'm going to take this fan here and I'm going to plug it into one of the headers coming from the cooler. So I'm going to go ahead and install this. There we go. And then take the other fan header and then connect it just like this. Now then, there's also a three pin connector to go ahead and power this unit, but I'm going to go ahead and make sure that I place the fans in the direction that I want them to go. So I don't want it to get all messy and whatnot with the cabling. So what I'm going to do is connect the fans like so. And I'm having it uh, blow air out through the top, so it's going to exhaust that way. And intake from the bottom, just like I'm going to intake from the front and exhaust through the rear. So make sure your orientation is correct. And then you are going to want to take these long fan screws here and go ahead and screw these into place. Although one moment, this cable is actually, yeah, there we go. Now it's situated better. That way when you go ahead and clean up the cables, it's much, much easier. So a lot of pre-planning for when you are uh, putting together a build for sure. Oh, and one more thing is that this is the Corsair link cable. So the mini USB will plug into the pump area here. And then this, I believe, will plug into the USB 2.0 connector on your motherboard. And this will allow you to monitor and uh, tweak your fan settings using Corsair's software, which could be very useful. So one more thing is that, let me go ahead and remove this real quick. You'll notice some thermal paste on the block and that's pre-applied. I forgot to get my own, so um, I mean, it's Corsair, I trust them. <laughs> so it should be okay. If anything, it'll be like one or two degrees difference, not the biggest deal in the world. Now I'm going to go ahead and place this cooler up at the top of the case ever so carefully. Make sure no cables are being squished anywhere. We will manage all of that later. Match it up and we're gonna go ahead and screw it in from the top. With the points all matched up, I'm gonna go ahead and use this little screw with a washer and then I'm gonna go ahead and screw it in place. It's really hard with like one hand holding it and the other one doing this, so I had to get it all set up. But once I get one corner in, the rest should be a lot easier. Ha, yes, I was correct. So now I'm going to just show you exactly how easy it is to install this radiator at the top of the case. You know, I have to admit, when I first started building a long time ago, which was about, uh, I know to some of you might not be a long time, but it was three years ago, this was very, very difficult. But I have to admit, with building more and more, it just gets easier over time. Just don't give up on yourself. <laughs> and the more you do, the more you learn, the more you know. So let me go ahead and just wrap this up. Let's not forget to pop in the motherboard IO. Hate this part. <laughs> Sometimes it's very easy and other times it's like pulling teeth. But uh, yeah, you get the idea. You just make sure it's all popped out before you install the motherboard.
I like that they've included the standoffs on there for you. They're black, so it just kind of like melds together. And I really like the standoff that kind of sticks out, and I will show you exactly what it does. So we're gonna go ahead and place the motherboard in here ever so gently and match up the points. And I'm gonna try to find that one that is sticking out. Where is it? There it is. So, as you can tell, because of this point here, the rest of the motherboard gets seated rather easily and quickly. I'm gonna go ahead and screw in uh, these screws into each of the standoffs. There are actually eight now instead of nine because of this point right here. So I'm gonna go ahead and start here at the bottom. Whoops, drop that. One moment. And remember that uh, you do want your points to match up because if any of those points touch any part of the motherboard, there's a chance that it may short. So that is beyond scary. We all know how expensive all the parts are. I'm always afraid to break them. <laughs> anyway, so let me go ahead and just finish this off. So I made an error in calculation. It really has been a long time. Uh, if I had the tubing on this side, it would have completely blocked the rear exhaust fan. I did not want to lose that. So I had to flip this radiator configuration so that I can go ahead and attach this onto the CPU. Um, but before I do that, I do want to talk a little bit about the tubing, which I really, really like, that it's cloth covered, it's braided, um, and it's something that I don't usually see, it's usually just rubber, so. And also the rear exhaust fan, I just took the opportunity to plug the uh, connector into the motherboard so that it wouldn't be impossible later on. <laughs> anyway, let's go ahead and attach the water block with the pre-applied paste and the pre-installed um, retention plate onto the CPU. So, but we wanna make sure that the Corsair logo is facing us, facing the right direction. And then we're gonna go ahead and place this on there. You stay, okay? And then we're gonna take these screws and make sure that these are, whoops, okay, make sure that these are secured. We're back at the top of the case again, and I just wanted to note that I had to remove these rubber grommets See these here in order to install the radiator using the screws and washers and I've tried with the screw and uh, the rubber grommet without the washer it just would not screw in and so if you are using this case it's just something to note. Now I'm going to install the power supply with the fan facing down to intake air so let's go ahead and just push it through here and I will screw it in on the other side. Let's install this power supply. So I'm just gonna go ahead and do that. I'm going to install the graphics card soon so that I could do a quick test boot before I wire all of the cables as well as uh, plug in the drives. So I'm going to remove these two expansion slots first. I like that they're metal. I wish all cases were mostly metal, haha. <laughs> anyway, and then I'm going to install the card in this slot because if I installed it here, it would really get in the way of the dims and I'm not doing a triple card setup, so it's all good. Now then, I'm going to bring the card in and going to click carefully slot it into here and match it up with the points and then seat it until you hear a snap meaning that it is good to go. 
We are ready to test boot and never mind this nest of cables, I will have it clean for you by the end and if not, I am so sorry. <laughs> but let's see what I've plugged in. The 20 plus 4 pin main power connector as well as the 8 pin supplemental CPU power and uh, this connector for the liquid cooler as well as the Corsair Link power connector that routes to the bottom to plug into a USB 2.0 connector. And last but not least is of course the graphics card power and obviously the power supply has to be on too. Yeah, I'm so excited! Now let's boot! So turn on the power supply as well as the power button on the motherboard! So we wait and see! <gasps> it's alive! Honestly, I'm so happy. <laughs> My baby has been born. Sweet! Now let's go ahead and install the drive. So we're going to start off with the XT 240 gig SSD. It even comes with its own frame. Although I believe it is purely decorative, so it's okay if I just leave it out. And it's a sticky frame if you peel that off. So this is a toolless mount on the back of the motherboard tray. And all you have to do is lift this tab here and go ahead and slide the SSD through till it hits the end. There's even an area here for you to secure it further with a screw if you wish. Next up is the 3.5 inch Western Digital Green Drive. It's two terabytes, plenty for all of that raw footage that I film every single week. And I'm gonna go ahead and take out the second drive caddy because it seems like there's a support beam behind the first one that will make cable management a little bit tricky. So this is a toolless design just like the 2.5 inch drive mount and you just slot the drive into the screws here. And I'm gonna go ahead and take this drive and show you how to do it. So you just Push it in like so, and then same thing for the other end. There we go. Aha! And there we have it, and go ahead and slot this back into the cage. Last but not least is this optical drive, yay! So first things first is I will need to go reach into here and pop out the front cover via two tabs. And then I, well, usually it's like this, but you release this. And then you go ahead and install the optical drive. And all you have to do is just slot it right in like this until it clicks into place. And you won't be able to move it because that's locked. But if you want to unlock it, push and then push the optical drive out. So if you were curious as to how that worked. And of course, let's say you're taking this on the go, you don't trust Toolless, they should have two screws here where you can also secure the drive more. Before we start the cable management, let's go ahead and plug in the data cables for the drives here, here, and on the back of the motherboard. And bear in mind how long the cable is and also where it's located. So since this is up here and back there, I'm gonna take up these two SATA slots on the motherboards. So I'm gonna go ahead and plug that in. And now for the fun part, the cable management. But some of you might be thinking, boo, we hate that. But why do we do it? Well, because it'll just look better. And also if you clean it up, you'll get better airflow. And wouldn't that just make you feel better? <laughs> anyway, let's go ahead and get started. I've threaded through the 20 plus 4 pin main connector and I'm going to go ahead and just plug this in. It's just so it's completely hidden on the right side. That's definitely what you want. Let's go ahead and plug this in. Yeah, make sure that it clicks.
So now the data drives have been plugged into the 3.5 inch, 2.5 inch, as well as the optical drive. I took some routing and I had to, I wish they were all straight plugs, but unfortunately they were not. I don't know why they're not all straight plugs, but uh, yes, it is done. And now let's go ahead and continue. Now I'm gonna go ahead and plug in the uh, USB connector from the, oops, is this way, from the CP cooler for the Corsair link and for more power into this USB port here. Good. And then let us go on. Now let's go ahead and plug in the USB 3.0 connector. So goes in right here. I'm gonna have to do some angling. Yes! Ah, that has worked. Beautiful. Let's plug in the audio connector to J odd right here. And I believe it is this way, is it this way? Be sure to check your motherboard manual to see how to use the M connector or if you have a connector like that for your build. And then we're gonna go ahead and take a look at the connector itself. So on one side, there's hard drive LED reset and on the other, there's power. And we're gonna start with the hard drive. So where is it? Reset, here we go. So for this one, if you flip this connector over, you'll see an arrow sign and then nothing. The arrow means it's positive. So you're gonna have to plug it in the correct way. And we're gonna start here. So make sure that the positive arrow is on the right side. I'm gonna plug it in just like so. And then let's look for the reset, shall we? So here is the reset plug. And then you'll notice that the positive and negative are on the opposing side. So we're gonna go ahead and plug it in just like this. So just because it shows the logo does not mean that it is the correct way. Now let's flip it around and plug in the rest of the power connectors. So make sure that these plugs are not in conflict with each other when plugging in. Okay, good. So for the power, flip it over and it's a negative charge first and then a positive. So I'm just gonna flip it around to the back and plug that in. And then these two connectors, I am not too sure what's going on here, but I do not see an arrow sign on either of them. So I'm just going to, I suppose, just follow the top and just plug it in. Let's go ahead and plug in the M connector here. Sadly, the cables were not long enough for me to thread through the bottom, so I'm gonna have to really clean up some cables in this section here. All right, cool. Now I'm moving right along. I'm gonna actually plug in a SATA connector for the, uh, to, for the power for the drive, so SATA power. All right, let's go ahead and see if this is enough. It's time to reseat the graphics card now that all the other little parts have been plugged in. So let's go ahead and do that. There we go. Aha, that is good. Make sure it's not squishing any cables. Okay, make sure this is in. Good. All right, now then to secure it, we're probably going to be using this thumb screw right here. So, there we go. 
I just need to plug in the power for the graphics card as well as the two front fans and I think I can go ahead and use these cable ties that I bought a long time ago to finally clean it all up. So let's go ahead and do that. There is a system fan header up there and one down there too, which makes it perfect so I don't need to plug in any Molex or have any Molex adapters. So that is very lovely. <laughs> So I understand that this cable management is terribly ugly. However, I think it is at least all bunched up together. <laughs> so I clearly need more practice uh, with cable management and I am so sorry about this, but uh, it is done and I can then put on the side panel and then we can start booting it up, but let's boot it up before we put on the main panel. And now to cable manage the front side a little bit, and I know I definitely should have pre-planned better for the back side, but now you know too. <laughs> so here we go. All the cables have been finished, so let's go ahead and turn this around to the power supply section and plug this baby in. And then let's plug in the HDMI for the monitor and then we will do another test boot. The power supply is on. We're gonna go ahead and power the system on using the power button, so let's pray this works. Yes! Yes! All that hard work. Yes, 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 yes! All right, stay tuned next week for software upload and the like. Of course, there's gonna be some benchmarking too. So, I mean, I guess stay tuned in a couple of weeks just in case it takes a little longer than necessary. Well, that wraps up this video on JTL's first epic gaming and editing build. I mean, you know, on this channel. So this has been really exciting and obviously I need to build more so that I could be better at this, but I'm so happy that I booted up, woohoo. <laughs> kind of like, if I can do it, you can do it. So hopefully you found it informative and if you wanted to do a build just like this, you will kind of know what I went through and probably bypass all of that. <laughs> anyway, let's take another look, a spin at this beautiful new baby. 
I gotta say, this case is really easy to build in. And I've built in like tiny cases before, so that's why I prefer mid tower. But let's stop off at Z window. There we go. But now I'm in the shade. <laughs> anyway, if you like what you saw and you wanna see more like it, be sure to hit the like, comment, and subscribe buttons, as well as follow me on social media. Joanne Tech Lover Facebook fan page, Joanne Tech Lover again on Twitter, and Joanne Tech Lover once more on Instagram. Also, please don't forget to hit the donate button so I can help expand this channel and feed this techie. And I have a new channel called JTL Lifestyle where I'll talk about everyday random gadgets and check that out if you are interested. And also JTL Cuteness Overload where I upload you know videos of cute puppies and everything cute in life. So definitely check that out if you are looking for, I don't know, maybe a smile. <laughs> One last thing is storeenvy.com where you can go ahead and check out my 8.5 by 11 inch autograph prints that you can buy. I guess all that's left to say is see you next time and hope you really, really enjoyed this build.